If you're lucky enough to live a long life, then you will undoubtedly experience the grief and the sadness that goes along with loss. Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the show for the over 50 gay male, about everything that's important to over 50 gay men, and hosted by two well over 50 gay men. Hello, I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And today we're going to take a look at how devastating loss can be to our over 50 gay community. First, we're going to take a look at the various levels of loss that we experience. The loss of our husband, partner, friends, our own independence. There's a lot. Then we're going to discuss how all of this affects our bodies, our minds, and our emotions. And then finally, we're going to take a look at how best to navigate through and deal with loss. This is something that will touch all of us at some point in our lives, if it hasn't already. So join the conversation as we take on life's inevitable loss. Did you guys know that we have our own private Facebook group? Become a member of our YouTuber Patreon today, and for as little as a dollar, you will gain access to our No Two Gays community page, where guys like us can share their thoughts in a safe space about topics exactly like the ones we discuss. You'll get early access to episodes and bonus content. So hop on over to Patreon and YouTube and help No Two Gays continue to go strong. Thanks, guys. All right, Michael. So this whole idea of us having to experience loss is really not new to the over 50 gay community. We, in our youth, especially those of us 60 and above, experienced a huge amount of loss during the AIDS crisis. It was amazing. Um, yeah, and devastating. It was devastating. Yeah. However, for a lot of younger gay men, because we were younger, we also had that young mindset of like, oh, we're invincible. And, you know, yes, this is happening around me, but it's not going to touch me uh, because I'm this young, strong buck of a man, right? B but as we're aging, as we're getting to this age, we realize, yeah, we are are not invincible. Uh, yeah. And you know, this is one of the reasons I love talking with you, Tom, because um, we, we have lived such different lives. And I remember when I was younger that for me, it was the polar opposite of that. I, yes, I was young, but I always felt, maybe because of the community that I was in, that the Grim Reaper was sort of right over my shoulder. So I didn't feel invincible. I always felt like I was on the deck of the Titanic just waiting for the ship to go down, which well, is I so think interesting. I mean, I think we all felt that too. Anytime you had a cough or you like sneezed, you're like, oh my God, this is yeah. it. I'm going to be dead tomorrow, right? But do you still feel that way today? I mean, do you still feel that grim reaper knocking at your door? Well, the interest, do I, I still feel him over my shoulder. I don't, that's, it's weird. I guess it's PTSD where that has never gone away for me. Well, obviously that is something that is showing up at all of our doorsteps now as we're aging, this whole idea of loss. And there are so many different types of loss that we either have already experienced or that we're going to experience. I mean, obviously losing a husband or a partner is a huge loss that we're going to go through, people who are partnered. Uh, but just loss of friendships or uh, partners, uh, relationships. Relationships, is, yeah. Yeah. For us single guys, that's a big one, relationships. Yeah. Our family, not all of the gay community was ostracized from their family, so they still have relationships and losing, you know, family members. So many guys our age um, are right now going through that whole thing with their parents. That's a huge loss. Um, but, but also loss of things like our health. Uh, our jobs, whether it's because we're retiring or we're just being phased out because we're just old guys, you yeah. know, um, including our independence. I don't know about you, but watching somebody have their car taken away from them or their driving taken away is yeah. so, man, that's such a horrible thing. Um, that happened with I, my grandmother and it, it, it was yeah. devastating for her and also for me, because she was the closest person I was to in my life. And it was just such a bizarre transition to have to make with her. Right. And that's something that we have to keep looking forward to. I mean, when we're driving around and my husband is like, you know, talking about the old 
guy in front of us with his turn signal going for the past four blocks or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, dude, that's going to be us one day. Yeah. And one day we're going to have to take the keys away from, you know, one of us. So it's something that's there, you know, uh, also a humongous thing that, that men our age and older um, are dealing with is the loss of income, of money, of being able to afford life. I mean, there is just so much of loss that is now coming, barreling towards us, whether we like it or not. And we're going to have to, first of all, acknowledge it and then learn how to deal with it. Um, That's the key right there is, is, you know, obtaining the tools to put in our toolbox so that we just have more ways of dealing with everything that we face as guys over 50 and who, you know, are careening down the hill. All right. Well, let's talk about that. How, how, first of all, how does this affect us? Um, loss is crazy. The grief, the sadness, the, what other kind of feelings are there? Like, Anxiety, Emptiness, depression. anxiety, depression. So much. And there's, there's so much on top of us, especially when it first happens, whatever your experience is, if, if it's in a moment of grief, we don't even get the depth of right. the feeling that really needs to come out of us in order to get back up and continue with our lives in a healthy way. Yeah. Anytime that I have gone through or experienced loss in my life, I've... I kind of um, describe it as these waves, like you'll just be going along and then all of a sudden you get hit by this wave of some sort of emotion. It could be, who knows what it is, and it just takes over, but then it passes. And I think that was like the biggest thing that I had to learn was that it will pass. Whatever this wave, whatever this emotion is at this moment, you feel like I can't make it through, but if you just hold on, you know, you will. And it, I think an important part of that is learning to ride the wave as opposed yep. to trying to get out of it before you've actually dealt with what was coming up in the moment. Because a lot of us, especially guys our age, we were taught to keep our emotions and our feelings down. Right. Um, and especially in our community, it, it was magnified because of our sexuality and who we, t- who we were told by the outside world that we were. And so, you know, our knee-jerk reaction is to bury. And riding the wave is hugely important and helpful for us to move on. Yeah, I I also see that within our community, um, that kind of bringing out our emotions or saying, like, I'm going through this or I'm experiencing this is not, like you said, we've been taught to push them aside. And now... So many guys are like, you know, hey, girl, hey, no, I'm fine. It's all good. You know, whatever. And you can just see them crumbling inside. If if, if most of the guys our age could take the I'm fine out of our vocabulary, I think it would do us all a great service. Because there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I'm not fine. Maybe you don't want to talk about it in the moment. But saying you're not fine is okay. You don't have to be fine 100% of the time, especially when you've are dealing with loss. It, it, like I said earlier, it comes along with not only sadness, but grief. And grief is a very heavy emotion that triggers other emotions. I mean, anger, anxiety, helplessness, as you said, hopelessness, sadness, all kinds of emotions are triggered by this grief and to be saying like, oh, no, 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 I'm good. It's all good. It's all good. (laughs) Whoa, it's not good. It's not good. No, it's not. And it's... Um, Yeah, about a a little over a decade ago, my best friend passed. um, And he was the brother I never had. And for a very long time, people would keep saying to me, how you doing? And I would be, I'm I'm okay. I'm fine. And (laughs) I was anything but... And yeah. um, I wasn't allowing myself the opportunity to break. And I understand why, because I wasn't sure I was able to, I was going to be able to get back up. I thought this felt like the end for me. I've never right. experienced grief on that level before. And I think we have to try to acknowledge in the moment that that's okay. If you don't know how to deal with it, then you learn. But don't say right. you're fine if you're not. Yeah, totally. Because again, Grief, 
anxiety, depression, all of this really affects us physically as well. And there are a few things that I want to just read because I was shocked by some of this. Grief has been shown to cause immune system dysfunction in people, raising general inflammation and the risk of infections. Grieving people have lower levels of certain immune system cells, um, which is crazy to me. It, it gets very complicated here. IL-6, IL-1, if anyone knows what those inflammatory markers are. <laughs> but this is something that I read that kind of mind-blowing. Vaccines may also be less effective when administered to grieving people. Grieving people's bodies don't seem to create as many antibodies to respond to infections. Who knew, you know? Or, yeah, or if you're living in a fear mode, which like you said, that's loss triggers that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's... our bodies, like, yeah, no wonder we feel like like crap when we're, you know, experiencing loss, because our bodies are fighting as well, you know? Yeah. I, I was really kind of shocked at that. Another big thing, I know you and I talked about this, is how grief and loss can affect someone's sleeping. Uh, you know, a lot of people sleep way too much, and then other people sleep not at all. And yeah, because sleeping is a go-to for me. I just don't yeah. want to get out of bed. And I'm going to share an experience, like with at, because of what you're saying about the immunity system, yeah. the immune system. Um, when I was working with the gay men's health crisis, I would see these guys with this unbelievably positive attitude, saying, "I'm not going anywhere. Fuck this fuck this virus. I'm going to prove everybody wrong." And there were a large number of them who are still around today. Yeah. But then there were the guys who were confronted with this just unbelievable situation at a very young age who just in some ways gave up and you saw the virus take control of that. Yeah. So it, it is hugely important that in the midst of whatever it is you're feeling, just to try and reach out and get a group of people around you who will support you. You don't necessarily have to talk about it, but just someone who gives you a hug changes everything in your body. Right. Uh Obviously, yes. And we're going to talk about that, how to best, you know, deal with this. But first of all, it's really acknowledging that this is happening. So if you are d dealing with one of those losses, a loss of a husband, a loss of a partner, a loss of a, even a pet can trigger all of this emotional and physical and uh, mental, uh, whatever, despair, something that's happening to your body, acknowledging that that's happening instead of like, no, no, I'm fine. It's all good. Yeah. I don't know why I feel so crappy. It's like, you feel crappy because loss is affecting yeah. everything about you. And you, you know? do know, because that's, that's something I have called people on a lot because I call myself on it a lot, um, is that when somebody says, I don't know, I'm like, you do. If you don't want to talk about it, that's awesome. But somewhere in there, you know, and eventually you're going to have to confront that. So, well, it's like I didn't really know about this whole physical thing. You know, uh, vaccines aren't going to work on you as well if you're in the midst of grief or um, sadness. Like those things, I, I don't know if a lot of people do know that. Yes, I know that it's it's fucking up my sleep patterns. It's messing with the way I'm eating. You know, whether I'm eating too much or too little. But I didn't know, like, inside my cells were also kind of going nuts. Uh, so, that, I mean, that's a really good thing to now know. Because, as I said, as we're aging, more and more of this loss is going to come and just slap us in the face. Yeah. Um, it's you know, unavoidable. Which is, I mean, it just is. The older we get, the more unavoidable avoidable it becomes. Uh, but that's also something that we, as older gay men, have to to kind of stop and say, yeah, it is coming instead of like, oh, no, 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 I'm good. It's, yeah. it's going to happen to me, yeah. whatever. I mean, even the, you know, yes, I'm a married man. I have a husband. But those fears also go into my head of like, what happens when he goes? Yeah. What if, like, am I going to go first? Is he going to go first? That's starting this whole grieving loss Thing that's it's a little bit on the crazy side um do you guys have conversations about that yeah you know we're always like oh yeah no no i'm going first and i'm you know i know it's like really you don't know that i mean seriously 
story about my family. My father was having open heart surgery, had a, I don't know what it was, a quadruple or whatever bypass, had a defibrillator put in. We were all staring at him thinking like, "Uh uh-oh, here we go. You know, we're ready for him to leave us. My mom dropped dead, like just dropped dead. Um, And everything had been put into her name because he's like, oh, no, I'm going first. You know, you just never, ever know. You don't know. Uh, Same thing just happened to an aunt and uncle of mine where the aunt is battling with Alzheimer's. Another horrible loss that we're going to have to talk about. Um, And her husband, who, you know, was going to visit her every day and taking care of her and whatever, he just died. It seems like the caregivers always are the ones to, like, go. So you really can't... that's interesting because we were just talking about that, right? Yeah. The the effect that it has on our body if we don't let it out and talk to people because the stress that the caregiver is all of a sudden under affects their health. Right. You know, seriously, back to my my mom, I remember being on the phone with her and she was like, oh yeah, I think I've got the flu. I'm not really feeling well. I'm like, well, you had a flu shot. You should be okay. And she's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm like, well, go to the doctor. No, you know, you're dead. I'll I'll go eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The caretaker forgets to take care of themselves. Exactly. You know, and and it's that line, what does the store just say on an airplane? If, you know, there's a sudden drop in cabin pressure, put your mask on first before you're able to help somebody else. Right. And we, you know, a lot of us, especially our generation, because we did become caretakers for people in our community that were dying because nobody else gave a shit. Yeah. And we forgot to take care of ourselves in so many different ways. And it's just something that I think a lot of us still carry with us that um, I'm going to take care of everybody else. And you forget, you forget about you. And the two have to be joined and, and, you know, respect your body as much as you're respecting that person who you're giving care to. Right. Right. Exactly. And, you know, whether it be a husband, a partner, or just a friend, just someone that you know, you really have to do, you know, make sure that you take care of yourself as well. Um, but you know, some of the other things that we're fearing, like I said, Alzheimer's, a lot of us are fearing like, oh, dementia, that, that could be coming towards us too. And fearing the loss of our, our minds or whatever. Um, and I, I, I do that to myself, I think almost on a daily basis now where like last night I was with some friends and, um, we were switching cars and I always, I have a bad habit of putting my key on my finger, my keys on my finger like a ring. And sometimes they fall off. And last night it it fell into a grocery bag. And thank God my other friend heard it. When I put the bag down, I'm like, oh shit, I think I left my keys at the tennis tournament. And he's like, well, your bag just made a sound that it it didn't even. (laughs) And I'm like, oh my God, I seriously, I'm going, I'm gone. But, um, you know, and it's something to laugh about, but it's also something, it's a great fear for, I think, guys our age who is like, am I going to lose that capacity? And, you know, as gay men, we have to watch out for each other as well. You know, um, if you start seeing a friend of yours starting to lose it a bit, it's our responsibility to kind of say something and not just like, oh yeah, he's fine. He'll, he'll be good, whatever, because we just don't know. We really just don't know. All right. So we know that there are all different types of loss that are barreling towards us. And we also know that it affects us in everything in our lives, mentally, physically, uh, emotionally. So let's figure out what do we do? How do we deal with some of this? Um, you know, I think we, we, we've touched on it already. I think confronting it and acknowledging it has to be the first step. First thing. It's the first thing with everything, just acknowledging. Yep. Um, you know, and also... When you are going through some sort of loss, it's really important to get out of your head because we tend to want to just sit up here and like we've been saying over and over, so many, it's not just a gay male thing, it's a male thing to be like, yeah, "Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm not going to the doctor. Everything's fine, you know, but being able to get out of our heads and actually talk about what's happening, um, it's really Giving yourself the grace to not know what to do, that it's okay not to have an answer in the moment. 
you know, and I think a lot of us are so hard on ourselves that I should know how to get out of this. Right. I should know what to do. You know, we're old. <laughs> we should know what to do. <laughs> but, the, the, you know, the, the, the reality is that when you're confronted with new situations, you can't know what to do. And, so, and grief and, takes, it's, this, it's just this blanket that covers everything. And, right. you know, it's, it's suffocating. And, and it's okay not to know what to do. But you still have to acknowledge that you're going through something. Right. But also to be able to say, I don't know what to do about this, but somebody does. Right. And somebody can help me. You know, if you cut your leg off, you're not going to just kind of prop it back up and go like, I'm good. You or know? sit and bleed to death, right? Yeah. You're going you're you're to find somebody who can help you, not your neighbor who, you know, works at the grocery store. You're going to actually go to somebody who has the knowledge to help you. And that's the same thing when you're going through loss, sadness, grief. You need to find that person who understands and knows how to, to help you. Um, talking with anybody helps. But I also know from personal experience that talking to people who don't get it aren't a lot of help. Right. You know? As um, much as they want to be, they, if, you right. have, if somebody hasn't gone through it, they don't know really what you're going through. Yeah. I um, had lost my mom when I was in my 30s. Um, I mean, I was an older person. I was an, an adult and everything. But it was kind of a rare thing uh, to my peer group. And so everyone was just kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, that's so bad. And whatever. It's like, you don't know. And then as we're aging and their moms or parents were dying and they're like, oh, my God, you don't know how it feels. I'm like, oh, yeah, I do. You know, yeah. and I know, as you said, you don't know it until you experience it. Or even, you know, people that have pets. I've always had pets and losing a pet is just the worst. Um, we have friends who just lost a pet. and. Like, I can just look at this woman and, and just look at her in the eyes, and she knows I feel what she's feeling. But other people who aren't into pets, they're like, oh, that's so bad, you know, thoughts and prayers, whatever. And it doesn't mean anything. So yeah. really seeking somebody who does get it, who gets what you're going through, they can help more, I really feel. And we're so um, lucky in this space and time that we exist in now, even though we've been programmed to not reach out, that there are so many support groups out there for people Ugh, who are going yeah. through exactly what it is we're going through and who do get it. Right. Um, and to have that as a foundation and then, you know, lean on friends who may not have experienced it, but are still willing to give you the empathy and compassion that you require. I, I, it, it, it's so it's such a gift to have this at our age that if we're able Unbelievable. To, to give ourselves that opportunity, that it, it's there for us. We do not have to do things alone anymore. You know, just these right. conversations that you and I have. Um, some of the guys who have reached out to us, oh my God, it blows me away. And the stories yeah. that they share because they're having a conversation that they're not having in other aspects of their life. And to me, that's such a gift for the two of us that has been given by the people who take the time to listen to us. I couldn't agree with you more. And in fact, what we're talking about today stems from a number of the guys who've been writing to us and mentioning loss that they're going through. A lot are losing their husbands. A lot have lost some friends. And, and that made us start kind of thinking and take that step back and like, no, this is a conversation that we need to start having in and stop all of that. No, it's all good. I'm fine. We're, yeah. we're good here. And I know as old people and even older gay guys who are like, oh my God, those young guys on their phones all the time, what, uh, you know, social media, blah, blah. But as you said, it's also brought us a gift where you can Google absolutely anything. Yep. You know, I'm experiencing loss of my left shoe and there's probably a support group out there for you, you know, which is so awesome because that's what we need, those people who get it. Yeah. And and everything's online, so you can be in a support group in, in a completely different city. I know when I was experiencing some loss, I wanted to go talk to someone, but I only wanted to talk to a gay male. I didn't want to, you know, have to do all of that weird explaining or you don't get me, I don't you know, having to do like a whole 15 minutes on 
how a gay male feel, you know, so you can find whoever it is you want to talk to. They're out there, you know, I think it's a fantastic, but I also think, and I've learned this from some of our viewers as well, who sent in some letters, it's really important to have a plan because as we're saying, these, these, all these different things of loss are coming towards us. And if we can put in plan or into action some sort of plan when it happens, that it will be left less devastating, perhaps, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, a game plan is always valuable, right? Yeah. Um, and granted, you know, you that's sort of the, the written part of it, right? But when you're thrown into the, the practical part of it, the plan may go out the window or parts of it may go out the window, but it's always good to be mentally aware of what might be coming down the pike for you oh, um totally. and, to, and yeah. just to plan on it and like you said especially as we get older yeah um even again back to my parents my mom like did everything my dad didn't even know how to shop or where to buy certain things and you know yeah that kind of like i had to have a conversation with my husband you do know all the passwords right like <laughs> <laughs> you know how to get into the bank, right? Because <laughs> I'm the one who normally does all our banking and, you know, we have certain things, but those are also part of the plan. If I'm hit by a bus tomorrow, he needs to know this stuff. Right. Um, if I'm going to lose my job or our house, we have to have some sort of plan instead of that devastation of what the fuck? just happened what are we gonna do oh my god yeah. and then that just sets you into this spiral of depression and anxiety and all of those other things and then your body starts eating itself up and yeah i i really do believe that having a plan is really really important uh i also feel like this is something that we have to explore even more i think we need to do an entire show on are you ready for what's coming? Not just the loss, but everything, you know? Um, but also, as we're talking about um, getting help with a therapist or a support group, would it hurt you to get off TikTok for a second and just kind of like Google that stuff first? So that maybe if something does happen, you've already got that in your back pocket? You know? Yeah. Uh, it, but again, it's, you know, one of those things that I think once it, it's easier not to, to make the plan and just sort of ride the wave that you're on and going, but it's, you know, it, it, eventually you're going to have to deal with, and that's the point of this whole show is eventually yeah. you're going to have to deal with what you're avoiding. Um, right. and a plan is, uh, you know, one of those things that it, a lot of people just sort of, was, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Because it's one of those, it's tangible, but it's not so much tangible. And it's, it is one of those things you could put off as opposed to, you know, a death where that right. isn't, there's an immediacy involved in that. Um, so yeah, well, like you said, we should do a whole show on that uh, in, in regard to making a plan and where we're going and you don't have to stick to it. You know, things might change, but it's good to lay the groundwork. Yeah. So I have two friends who lost their husbands. Uh, one was kind of an immediate thing and the other went through an illness. And for anybody who's been through loss, you know, um, going through an illness with somebody helps you prepare for the loss. So it's not as devastating. The The guy who lost his husband instantly, they had everything planned out. Like what would happen if one of us leaves, you know, what are we going to do with our bodies? Like all of that, like really important kind of thing. So it was an instant thing. So he was devastated, but he also went in that mode of like, okay, I know we have this all planned out. I know who to call. I know what to do. I know, you know, where the insurance is. I know how to call his company to get the life insurance, like all of that stuff. Yeah. And that, that planning took a huge burden off of his back while he was experiencing the grief, right? Totally. Yeah. Because and I, yet having to deal with the death and then having this 
flood right. of other issues that come in. Oh my God, I have to take, you know, the, the funeral plot or what is, right. is it, does he want to be cremated? What are the financial situations? Who's, who's supposed to take care of this? Are things that have to be considered? Right. And the other friend of mine who lost his husband through an illness, who was prepared for the loss and so wasn't in this devastated, oh my God, I'm so sad because he had been, you know, years of getting ready for this. But when the, his husband died, he was like, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, let's help. Let's figure this out. But it was, I, I saw this big difference between how they both were affected by it. And instead of spiraling down in sadness, he spiraled down in, I don't know what to do. I can't move. I, I can't move forward with this. So yeah, I think having a plan really does help. Um, you know, of course, any sort of loss that you experience is going to bring in a lot of sadness, a lot of grief, yeah. all of those waves of different emotions, anger and everything. Um, but if you're prepared, it certainly helps. So again, you guys, you guys have all this funky stuff taken care of. You guys have put all the... Oh, God, no, of course not. I have nothing prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so see, there's a good thing, right? Because, you know, if, yeah. if you have a friend who is experiencing something and they didn't make a plan, don't say, oh, I can't believe you didn't make a plan. Just <laughs> no, offer to help and be there for yeah. them. <laughs> so right. now I know that there's still some planning you guys have to do. You know, if one of you go, I'm going to be there for the other one. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean... But again, that's true whether it's the loss of a friend, a husband, a relationship, even, you know, just a relationship that ends can be really devastating yeah. to people. It, trust you know? me when I tell you it is. And that's maybe something a single folks uh, experience very differently than you married folk. Because, you know, when you go into a relationship, or at least when I do, I don't think in my head, oh, this is going to end eventually and, uh, you know, I'll move on. So you put everything into it, heart, soul, everything you would into a relationship. And then all of a sudden, when things go bad, it's devastating. Yeah. And then we have to pick ourselves up and we have to put, get back on the horse and we have to continue to try. And, you know, sometimes you get into the headspace of, uh, fuck this, I'm just going to be alone. But me, I'm going to try, I'm going to get on that horse until the horse can't stand up anymore. Because uh, I just don't, I, I, for me, the alternative isn't uh, the thing that I want in my life. That right. I, I'll, I'll keep taking the hits until, uh, you know, hopefully but, I meet my forever person. And that would be a lovely thing. Hopefully. Uh, but... I know you well enough. I've experienced you. You know, you aren't one of those people that are like, yeah, let me talk through what's happening. You shut down and that's totally. not a good thing. Yeah. Nope. Right. But I'm also capable um, now of saying to somebody, I'm not ready to talk about it. Great. And then know that you called me out on it. So you're going to, you're going to be, you, you have my back. You're kind of watching over me. And you know, that's the job of friends is to just keep poking. You ready right. yet? You ready yet? you ready yet? You know, it's like the kid in the back of the car. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Um, <laughs> right. And uh, I eventually do. But I, I you know, for me, because my mind works in a very odd way, um, I have to figure things out because you know, I'm a very literal person. <laughs> so um, yes. I, I process differently. Um, so I feel like there's a place I need to retreat to, but knowing that someone is there who's like waiting for me to come out and say, let me hear what you got to say. Makes all yeah. the difference in the world. Great. So for all of our watchers and listeners out there, you know, watch out for everybody else as well. Yeah. You know, keep an eye out for your friends. And, and if you know someone that has experienced loss, um, or if you yourself are experiencing loss, you know, number one thing is acknowledge it. Uh, this is happening to me. And then, you know, there's a few things that everyone can do uh, for themselves or to make sure that other people are doing. And number one thing is sleeping. Make sure that they're sleeping. You know, get into a routine so that you can sleep more normally because the body needs to start healing itself, you know. And that goes as well as like eating. I know when I experience loss, I'm going to that 
cupcake place. Sugar getting... and fat. Oh my yes. God, right? It's so comforting. And yet it's not good for us. No. Um, you know, but now I, I can also go like, all right, I will only have one cupcake as opposed to the, whole the 45 of them that I yeah. bought. Yeah. Um, but to eat a balanced diet, to go along with sleeping, because we have to keep our bodies, you know, in tune. And that also includes physical activity, because I don't know about you, but when I'm experiencing loss, want to shut down, leave me alone. I'm not going to go out. I'm just going to sit here on this couch and watch television all day. Doesn't help you at it one bit. No. Right. And it, but you know, but it is okay for maybe make, give yourself a couple of days. Oh yeah, exactly. To, to, to just to just sit in it, but then you got to be able to pull yourself off that couch and away from the box of cupcakes. Go to yeah. the gym. Go out for a walk. There are, you know, if and even if you're not capable or you know semi immobile, as a lot of guys our age are, um, get onto the floor and do some yoga. Buy a yoga mat. Just just move. Move your body. Whatever parts yeah. of your body are able to move, move them. It just changes. Like, like you said, loss affects our immune system, right? Yeah. So does movement. It, 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 it changes our chemical balance and it makes us feel better. So right. move. If you're experiencing and, loss, move. And that's for all of us to watch out for all of our other gay men over 50 in the community, watch out for everybody. And if you do see this, if you see that person shutting down, go and get them out and go walk with them. Or if they are immobile, go and do some chair yoga with them or, you know, just help them in that way because maybe you don't understand the loss that they're going through, but you can help them bring some, like a great salad for them to eat, you know, yeah. like help them, help them help themselves. I think we, we all need that as well. Because again, and, we do get lost. We do get lost yeah, when we're uh, experiencing grief and loss. Yeah, and yeah. It, it, you're, you're like a ship that's no longer moored to a dock. You're just floating and just feel so separate from everything. And it's just a really right. dark, dark place. Um, so that is when we need other people in our life to sort of extend a hand and reach out to us. And your boat analogy uh, is fantastic because, as I said earlier, we get hit by these waves of emotion. And so instead of buying into those, just be like, oh, here comes another one. Okay, I know this is going to pass. And, you know, the ship is not going to go down. Let's just hold on and then we can move forward. There's so much that goes with loss, so much, so many feelings and emotions. And now we know physical things that we're experiencing. It's tough. And the biggest thing that we as mature gay men have to be aware of is that there's a lot of it coming towards us. And the better way we can deal with it, the better we will be, the better partners, friends, coworkers we will be as well. Um, so keep an eye out for it, everybody and ourselves yeah, as well. And because the older we get, it, it does not get easier. Loss doesn't get easier. And sometimes it actually seems to get harder because again, it's like another punch. It's another gut punch. Oh, right. right. And yeah, cause sometimes I do sit back and marvel that it's like at this age, you would think that I had it all together. And when somebody passed or I was experiencing loss that I would be able to deal with it better. No. But sometimes it's just like another kick in the nuts and you're, you know, you're down on the ground and you're like, I'm not getting up this time. Yeah. And that's when, that's when we have to fight the hardest. Um, right. You know, cause giving up isn't an option. It shouldn't be an option, you know? Yeah. Never, never give up. Never. And I want to hear from all of our guys out there. Um, how, how do you deal with loss? I mean, as we keep saying, it's out there and we're all being affected by it. So what are things that you guys have found helpful? Because we want to share this with everybody. Um, leave us a, a comment. Let us know what has worked for you, what hasn't worked for you. That's even even as good. Um, and also by leaving a comment, that really helps our videos get out there to other guys who may not be in a community where they have a really big gay uh, support group. So 
getting That's our videos up. That's another thing I'm loving about our listeners yeah. is that if they see a comment from somebody who's experiencing something and it's something that they've gone through, they'll offer suggestions or like, I've been through this, I get it. And right. I, I think that's what we, rem we have to remember to do as a community. Speaking of community, um, how can these guys get in touch with us, Michael? You guys could reach us across social media at No Two Gays About It. And just remember, it's the number two. Um, and we are on Facebook, Instagram, Threads. Um, and don't forget YouTube and Patreon. Um, and, you know, join us. We want to hear from you guys. Uh, you, you make us sort of push our boundaries and learn things that um, you, you're teaching us as uh, you know, and, and we, we are appreciative of that. No kidding. It's a big community and we're all going to learn from each other. And I'm going to send a quick shout out to Ted Zalewski, Cesar Montero and David Tiley, who have joined us at our executive producer role. We thank you so much for the support and the encouragement and the comments. If you are watching us on YouTube, do us a big favor Make sure you click like and subscribe and also hit that little bell. So whenever we have a new show out that you will be notified. Um, and again, by leaving us comments and subscribing, it gets us out there to all the guys that may not be aware that we're out there. And we want all of you to join the conversation and let us know what you feel is an important thing to talk about. This loss was a huge, important thing to talk about, and we're just beginning to talk about it. So, Michael, thank you for sharing all of your experiences with us and being open. Yeah, and thank you, Tom, for having the conversation with me. And thank all of you guys for listening and all of your comments. We really appreciate it. We totally do. So until next time, Michael. Until next time. See you later. See ya. Hey. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you like what you saw, check out some of our other videos.